Okay, nice to meet you after this long wait. <laughs> Hi there, Bob. Hi, tell me what you'd like to change today, Rowena. Um, I would like to be able to um, do some activity, some work, some pleasure, some something, without prevaricating. I'd like to be able to enjoy it more. So, for instance, I have um, um, I went to that conference and the research I, conference. Yeah, and I okay. have to I have to write my notes up and awesome. send them off, and I'm busy putting it to one side and putting it to one side and putting it to one side. Other things are more important, <coughs> and um, I do the same with reading. Or I'd love to sit down and read a chapter of a book, and, and I think no, no, I better do so and so else first. I'm very, very good at surfing the web and not doing my work, and I'm fairly convinced there's some, there's, there's some kind of like a little obstacle. Some, there could be a psychological some issue. Some psychological thing <laughs> going on that's stopping me from. Okay, so what you want? Achieving what I want. Sounds like what you want is to be able to prioritise and take action. Yeah, I can prioritise beautifully. Oh, I can write okay. do lists okay. till I'm blue so in the face. So you want to mobilise yourself? I, I tell you what I've done over the years. The thing I've I've used in order to make myself do things, even though I want to do them, I still have to make myself do them. Is on the bottom of my do list, I put the worst possible thing I can think of. So I'll avoid doing that. I'll do the other things. It's usually mop, mop, mop in the kitchen floor. Hate that the most. So tell me again what you re <laughs> in in real terms, what is the change you want? <coughs> so, for example, when you walk away today, how would you like to be different and spell it out to me? I, I'd like to be able to think, tomorrow's Tuesday, I'm going to sit down in the morning and do those conference notes and then do it. So you want to actionise yourself? I want to be able to, to take the action I've promised myself oh. that I want to do, but somewhere along the way it gets blocked. Okay, so what stops you actionising? That's the puzzle, I don't know. Well, Irina, here comes a magic question. Okay. <laughs> if you did know and you just guessed, what do you think <laughs> it would be? Um, I, I, I think maybe, and I'm, I don't feel this, but it's a, th a thinking thing, that maybe it's to do with my schooling and my mother and, and not doing things on time became a way of, of thwarting being rebellious. Oh, so it's a rebellious action. I think, but it doesn't feel like that. Sometimes it just feels like, oh, well, I'll just surf the web or I'll, I'll, I'll go and do something else instead. But it doesn't feel rebellious at the time I'm doing it. <clears throat> but I, I, it, it's, it's all my life, so it's not something that's happened recently. It's, it's always been there. So do you see it as a passive action? Surfing the web or whatever, instead of Actionising. Um, I suppose, it as a whole, done, it's it? A, it, it doesn't get things done. It might get other things done. But it doesn't get what you want to be done done. No, it, it doesn't get the thing that I've allocated to do that day done. It, it might get something else done. So it's not always passivity. It's sometimes activity. But it's not the thing I said I'd do. Mm. So it's, it's as if the thing I said I'd do is forbidden. I can't do the thing that I promised myself. I have to do all the other things first. You know, I've got a fantasy with you. Go Can on. Can I share it with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I got my pen and paper out, mm -hmm. I said, okay, let's do a list of the things that you really want to do. Mm -hmm. And we'll stick it on your fridge. Yeah. In nice big red letters so mm -hmm. you know they're there. Yeah. I don't think you do any of the bloody things. I might. You'd probably, you'd I probably might do watch some. It. <laughs> <laughs> I might do some, but I yeah, probably wouldn't do them all. No. I do. I do really like crossing them out when I've done them. This I get a lot out of that. Well, that's different. This is about you doing things that you want to do in your own time for you, rather than, rather than some I must do this, I ought to be doing this. Mm. You know, it's almost like a parent. You know, when you said yeah, that rebellious yeah. stuff, that's what it sounds it could like be, to me. Yeah. Except, it's not. I mean, the thing I might really like doing is is ignored just as much as the things I don't want to do. Hmm. So I, I just don't I don't get that bit. Well, 
I was brought Jessica into this again, but I'm going to bring it in again. As she's practicing being a teenager, and she's often telling me exactly what you've reported. Even mm. though she might like to do certain things, she won't do it because mm. I've told her to do it. Okay. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. You know, that's what teenagers do. They push the boundaries and often don't do things they even want to do mm. because they're pushing those boundaries. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I do that a lot of the time. Internally and probably gets played externally out. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Like, yesterday I was doing some computer work and I could tell that my fella was irritated because I wasn't doing some house-type work, because he was. So I should be as well. And there was a sort of a free song for me of, I'm not going to. You know, I know what you want me to do, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. And yeah. you're not going to make me do it. Precisely, yeah. 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 But I'm doing that to myself. Sounds like you're doing externally and internally. Hmm. Okay. Makes sense. So my parent is telling my child what to do and my child is basically being defiant. Sounds like it to me, Rowena. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Caught me out. Caught you out. <laughs> but every once in a while something comes along and I really want to do and I do get to really do it. Mm. And there's usually some sort of overriding factor, like I must do it for Bob because Bob will be pleased if I do it for Bob. Oh. <coughs> I'd be honoured. Sometimes, you. not always. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, how how is this going to change, Robin? Well, what's going to happen differently? Well, I'd like it to change. I'd like to be able to think I'm going to do uh, this and then sit and down and do it. This ain't going to change on its own. No. So, you know, what, what's going to happen? Do you think? I don't know. What do you recommend? Oh God, the pressure of asking me what. <laughs> 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 just thought I'd toss it to just you. Like you know, yeah. I'll tell you what. Get used to all my work for me. What about if both I recommend something and you recommend something, and okay. I recommend something and you recommend something, and maybe together we'll come to some sort of full options? Okay. Do you think about? Okay, we'll share it out. You start then. Um, or do you want me to start? <clears throat> um, I'm happy to start. I'm just. I suppose I could just make myself do it by. Um, Forcing yourself. Yeah, screwing myself up to the nth degree. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like a very good option, but I mean, it's a, you, I suppose you could force yourself yeah. to do it. Yeah, it's an option. Another one you could do is cause of somehow make the whole process fun. Because my fancy, I'm not sure with all these listed things that you've got to do that it, it may not be fun, I don't know. But somehow it becomes some sort of... Uh, it's, it's usually all right once I start. Hmm. So the starting could be made. So it's the, it's the start, it's the actual sitting yeah. down to do the thing. Yeah. Hmm. You so know, you I can prevaricate forever before that sitting down moment. Hmm. So it would be somehow to make that whole process fun instead of sort of a, you know, I've got to do it sort of thing. Yeah, OK. That's one of mine. How can I make it fun then? Well, that's your, over to you then. Well, because everything I'll put in my list to do to make it fun, I'll prevaricate and not do, won't I? So it's just circular. Mm. That's, is that an option? Well, is it my go or yours? Uh, that was my go, it's your go uh, now. My other one would be that you include your fellow in this. Well, that that's just, that's just a recipe for disaster. Well, it's an option. OK. But somehow you two could work out a way where both of you can get the, your needs met. Instead of an well, iron or it, your It's situation. a remote possibility that remote. that would work, but it is remote because I think I'd probably just end up fighting him. I would. You wouldn't work towards a system where you could both get your needs met from an adult perspective. Mm. That requires that both of us be an adult. And do you not want to be an adult? Well, yeah, I'd love to be an adult, <laughs> but I don't know that I could get him an adult. I don't know he could get him an adult, yeah. so. It's a possibility. So there's another possibility. It's a plan. Five yeah. or six options. 
Yeah. So far. Is it? Okay. No, we've got Four. the option. You're going to force yourself to do it. Okay. You're going to make it fun. I'm going to make it fun. And then there's one that I wasn't quite sure about, you, but you were saying you could do something. And, I, and then there's the next one I talked about, which was including the other person. Yeah. Any more? I could not do it. Yeah. At all? Yeah. So not, I mean, that's great. Then nothing will get done, eh? Yeah. Eventually, if you leave things long enough, you don't need to do them anymore because the deadline's nice gone. It. Yeah. Don't think that will work with my um, my next year's tasks for my training course. Do you? Don't think I'd get past if I didn't do anything. Probably not. <laughs> Counterproductive then. Mm. Think of anything else? No, well, I've got one, but it would demand a piece of therapy now. Okay. So that's an option. That you tell your mother and father, either your mother or your father, or your father and your mother, or both of them together, that you're going to do things, but you're going to do them your own way. And that's fine. Yeah. Well, that's quick. I that seemed, did I that could, seem appealing to well, you? Well, um, I'm not quite sure how to do it, but there oh, wouldn't be much share point. There, there wouldn't be them. much point in telling my father because he wasn't there and wasn't really involved anyway. So he wouldn't be the one. He wouldn't be. He wouldn't be involved. He wouldn't be involved either in the telling me what to do or not to do, or the result, which was whether I did it right or not. He wouldn't be involved really. So it would have to be my mother. So just from that by me again, so if you told your father that you were going to do this your own way and that's okay, so that you could... Well, it, 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 that wouldn't have very much impact. Because? Because he wasn't involved. He oh, wasn't, but he wasn't gonna, there. Oh, because he wasn't there. Well, he was there, but he went out to work really early and came back and, you know, he, we worked in the fruit trade, so he went out to work at four o'clock in the morning. So he wasn't there through breakfast and all that sort of stuff, and then in the evenings he'd come back and kip and then he'd be up for supper and we'd see him at supper but that would only be it mostly he wasn't involved with sort of the running of the family and stuff like that so did he have much involvement in you in terms of you growing up very little i think which is quite sad but you know you know those questionnaires that you get you know um if your father was was pleased with you how would he show it if he was sad with you or whatever and uh, i'd come out with a list of blanks mostly because he wouldn't be there to show any of those things which makes me sad the realization now that he wasn't connected no <clears throat> but that's the way it was he was busy off you know earning the pennies and doing the things that blokes do so he wasn't really connected to whether i did things or didn't do things Maybe that, in a way, is a bit of a problem. Maybe if he had been more connected, um, I might have had somebody to do them for. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant, you see, when I, one of my options about talking to your fellow about how can we both get our needs met. No, because uh, my, my fellow isn't representative of my dad. No, I meant, I know he isn't. No, but I mean, his, his behaviour, he, he, he's not like him. He's not distanced like that. So that so you wouldn't be the same. Him. Except you could talk to him then. And he might listen to you. He might. Maybe that's the difference, Rowena. Which? That you're projecting onto your fellow, what's his name? Jules. That you're projecting onto Jules what you expect. From your father. It doesn't sit right. I hear what you're saying, I understand the point, but... I think, actually, you're right, but in the opposite way than you think. I think I would like to be able to project that father onto him, but he refuses kind of thing. In Why would you want to project an absent father? Uh, the, dis the distance element is more familiar to me. I don't like the, I don't like to be smothered. I don't like that feeling of somebody being clingy 
and um, kind like, of all over you. I you prefer like a bit of distance. Yeah. Do you, of course, with a father that persistent, that would make mm. sense. Yeah, it does. But it's a trap, isn't it? How can you get the intimacy, that type of care and support that you want, when someone's distant from you? Because I saw the sadness you had just then. Mm. When you're thinking of your father, how can you have that intimacy and that support without perhaps feeling the sadness of the intimate of the absence? I didn't feel sad it's at probably, the time. Probably. I didn't feel sad at the time. No, I mean I saw it. I have saw it. I've <coughs> seen sad ago. since, but um, that's a hindsight thing. I, I didn't feel sad at the time. It was just the way it was. No, I mean now. You yeah. look sad. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sad now. <coughs> yeah. But I, I don't. The co the connection between my father and my father just doesn't it, that doesn't gel. Doesn't work. I can't. I couldn't talk to Jules in get him to behave like my father, or even the opposite. Or it just, it doesn't fit. But he is acting differently from your father. That's what I mean. Yeah, of course. So the question for me is, do you want him to act even more differently and be more intimate? Or do you want him to be more absent, just like your father was? I'd be more comfortable with him being more absent. Yes, and that's the trap. Why is this a trap? Because what I know about you and what you've worked on in therapy is how to be more intimate, how to be more close, how to show your feelings. And you deserve to be with someone who would meet you that way. Even though you may feel uncomfortable and want to go back to the script of your father, as part of you, but it desires to be different, I know that about you. Mm. It makes sense, but I couldn't slot Jules into that slot. It wouldn't work. Because? <clears throat> well, he's, he's he's the wrong sort of personality to to slot into that into that. He just wouldn't fit. His, Where would he fit? He's not that? a copy of my father in any Where sort of way. Where would he fit if you have the absent here? And the intimacy circle there, where would he fit? So there's the absent father, just like your dad. And then there's a very intimate father, maybe like your fantasies or what you've been working towards in therapy. Where would he fit in that whole Well, I don't, I don't want that. I, I would prefer that. I'd feel more comfortable with that. But Jules doesn't fit into either slot. OK, on the spectrum, where does he go? There's Nor. That's the absent. <sighs> And there's hundred, the intimate. Where okay, would you put his it? desire puts him at this end. My desire would prefer him to be at that end. Okay, and so in, there's a and there's in a reality. There's in a reality. In reality, there's a clash. Okay, where is he though? In reality, put him on this naught to a hundred graph. Where is he? He's in more reality. at this end of the scale than that end of the scale. Would you say seventy or eighty? If this is a hundred, yeah. Um, in terms of intimacy, from the point of view of what he would like, no, in I'd put him at somewhere no, around ninety. The point of how it actually is. How it actually is is near a sort of sixty. So it's about sixty. That's in yeah, reality. Yeah, it's more than halfway, but that's because of um, his desire rather than mine. So in reality, it's about sixty. Probably, yeah. Let's run with that. Hmm? Let's run with that. It's difficult to quantify. We can run with 60. OK. Can we? All right, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. OK. And are you happy with that? Or would you like it to be different? Would you like him to change or you to change? Or would you like, are you happy with that 60%? Um, I'd prefer to put him on a completely different scale. 
<laughs> you are wonderful at not answering the questions I ask okay. you. Okay. Oh, are you I, happy I, with that? No, I'm not. <laughs> You're not happy with that? No. Okay. Okay, right. So what would you like to change it to? Um, okay, if I had to run with that scale, then I'd prefer to change it to the other, to more towards the distance. Where would you put it? 40. The other side of 50. Okay. And is that what you're working towards in the relationship? I would like to be able to work towards that, yes. But there's kind of a presumption about what you just said which doesn't necessarily apply. What do you mean? Well, if there's only one person working, then... No. There's How a come? presumption there, I've got isn't there? act of curiosity for you. <laughs> and when I heard you talked about your father, I could experience in the here and now that you were getting sad. Yeah. At that, that absence. Yeah. So how come you would want to be in a relationship with someone and work more towards that? <coughs> um, of okay. Um, it, it's kind of encapsulated in a phrase I quite like, which is um, somebody that has your best interests at heart. Now, even when my dad wasn't there physically, I was always aware that he had my best interests at heart and the rest of the family as well, not just me. He was, he was doing his bit. It's just that his bit wasn't connecting with us particularly. So you were, <coughs> sort, of, so you were sort of connected? There, there was a feeling of, of being a part of it, yes. Mm. So um, it's a kind of benign um, looker over of whatever's going on. I, I spoke to my cousin David, who's about ten years older than me, who his his father was not there from a very early age for him, and he treated my father as as his main father figure. And I spoke to him only a few years back, and I said, "What was it like?" And he said, "Well, he was great, and he had a wonderful sense of humour, but he was distant." That's that's how my father was. He was distant. You get the feeling of him looking off into the distance in a sort of romantic sort of looking off in the distance sort of a way. <laughs> but I could I could identify with with what my cousin said. I understood where he was coming from. I didn't mean to say he he didn't feel loved, and it didn't mean to say that he didn't love my father. And I think that was the same for all of us in slightly different ways. So, I guess that as a, as, a, as a role model means that somebody who wants more intimacy is actually kind of uncomfortable. Hmm. You seem to have stopped. I seem to have stopped, or you seem to have stopped, or we both stopped. Okay, I stopped and you're not saying anything in return. Would you like me to say something back? I don't know. I don't know where to go with that. Or any further with that. No, I can see that. Kind of come to a full stop. Yeah. And is that the same in your relationship with Jules? Sort of, sort of, sort of a full stop? No. That you want more absence and he wants more intimacy, so something, nothing no, goes. No, that's just a constant battle. What you constantly battle with. Mm. I think that Jules is more like my mum, in fact. Oh, maybe a bit.
But I don't, I don't, coming back to the original thing, I don't think I prevaricate because of my dad. So, mm. although he wasn't there, and uh, it would have been nice if he had been there, and it would have been nice if he'd have been <coughs> somebody that I could have done things for. I don't think it was him that I was prevaricating because of, I think it's more likely my mum. I get the feeling that you want me to say more, but I don't know what to say. No. Oh. No, I was, I was just thinking about you and how you were in, in this intimacy absence spectrum. And how my fantasy would be if I was... You know, how I'd be with you. I'd want to encourage you more, mm. support you, and ask, how you, ask you how you're getting on. I, want, uh, I didn't get that, you see. I wouldn't want to battle mm. or be absent. And my mum would spend her entire time sort of doing her duty. She still does. And she does it very well. Mm. I'd want to say, how are you getting on? She'd look after us physically well, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't emotionally connect in that way. As long as we were going to school and doing the right thing and um, she wasn't getting any flack from the teachers about mm. not doing our homework or something, then that was always fine with her world. She didn't really, uh, she didn't want to know what we were doing, how we were doing. And she, she has her own sort of potted image of each of us and who we are and how we are, which she still carries, and it, it could be completely wrong. In most cases, it is, in fact, completely wrong. <clears throat> but that potted image hasn't changed over the years at all. It's like a caricature. So it would have been nice if there'd have been more connection there. I think also, I mean, I learned very early on to be um, how much I could get away with. I learned to be rebellious because there was no point doing work if nobody was ever going to check up on you. Nobody was going to ever ask you what that French declension was. There was no point in learning it. So, so, if your mother was here now, hmm. and you were to ask her, or make a demand to her, what would you demand of her? Um, that she actually spent some time sat down with all of us, but obviously me particularly. Stay with you. Um, that she would sit down with me and uh, show an interest in what we were so doing. So show an interest in me, Mother. Mm. I've done some pretty good things here. Mm. Show some interest in me. Spend some time. Spend some time with me. Mm. <coughs> Spend some time with me, Mother. I've done some really interesting things here. Just come and spend some time with me. But so I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to have to ask her. I said make a demand. Um, okay. I'm not talking about asking. No, I would her. prefer her to have spontaneously well, asked I, me. And that was the problem. She didn't, did she? No. <coughs> Which is why I'm suggesting you make a demand of her. But you're right. It wouldn't work as well. I mean, yeah, maybe if I had her done, she might have done for a bit. So you don't think she would have listened? Uh, she probably would have, for a bit, she would have perhaps paid lip service to it. But she wouldn't really have been interested. Well, would you like to, would you like to have a go or perhaps we should talk to her? How come she wasn't interested in her daughter? <coughs> well, we could have a go, but I'm fairly sure I know what the answer is. Oh, what would the answer be? Well, because she would just be too busy. 
She would be doing whatever jobs she had to do, making supper. So if you shouted really hard to her, what about me? Spend some time with me. How come you're not spending time with me? Do you think she would stop being so busy? Um... Probably. But she'd have wriggled out of it if she could have done. But if she hadn't wriggled out of it, if she'd have feeling, been feeling generous that day, yeah, she'd have come and she'd have sat down and, I don't know, worked with me on something. <clears throat> But um, beyond that, I mean, she wouldn't come back later on and say, how's it going, or what's happening next, or... She, the next day, she wouldn't particularly say, how did that go? She never, I mean, I don't think she ever really paid much attention to whether we did any work or not, other than, as I say, she knew it was okay if she didn't get complaints. Distanced, very distanced. So what you really needed was somebody to pay attention with you, to pay mm. some time with you, so you felt you belonged. Yeah. Instead of just sort of um, go out and play, dear, type attitude, you know, get out from under my feet, those sorts of phrases. Too busy for you. So my option, way back, one of them, was how can you and Jules both get your needs met? Do you remember? Vaguely. <laughs> good job I put it back, because I remember. Good, good job you've got a good memory. That seems to be one of my favourites at the moment. How both of you can sit down together and talk about how you can belong together. How you can support each other. Would be a way forward, I think. Hmm, that would be quite good. Now, one thing that my fantasy is with you is you're likely to give up pretty quickly. Is that true? Because your father, it depends your mother, what you mean by give up. your father was obstinate, your mother gave up pretty quickly. So you haven't got models of somebody who'd stayed well, with I've you. Well, I've been with him 20 odd years.